In order to program well in Excel VBA, you sometimes need to know what values are, what cell addresses are. So I made this simple demo. Control Shift S gives me a nice little pop-up screen that shows me a certain amount of properties and address properties of the cell we are in. So for instance, the text property of this cell is the formatted version of that cell. The value property and the value to property are only different in that way that the value property only shows us a maximum of four digits past the decimal point. Value two shows all the dis digits that are available. The formula property says that is D8 times 1.1 of that cell. And the formula R1C1 property says in the same row, two columns to the left times 1.1. And the address of that cell is, without any qualifications, it is the absolute cell address F8. If you say address false, false, then row and column are relative, not locked, F8 without string signs. And then we can refer to the address in the R1C1 notation that is in row 8 and column 6. If we do that with non-absolute notations, that is row 7 down, column 5 to the right. And finally, there is a more complicated one that I let you figure out on your own. How can we get that form and how can we make it work that when I click on another cell, that it also shows me what the properties are of that cell. Okay, that's what we are going to do. So how do you get that form? We create insert user form in VBA Alt F11. Just Alt F11 gives you the VBA screen. Insert a user form. And on the user form, we are going to put labels. These are labels that tell you what is in there. These are labels that tell you what is in there. But the other labels we are going to fill with VBA code. So once we have inserted those form, you can do that from this toolbox. You can insert, for instance, an, an A, a label box entity. So that would be something like this. I'm going to delete that one for that's not what we need. Then we go from the view object to the view code screen. And that looks like this. On the user form, we create a subroutine that I call fill. On error, resume next. And then the first label we are going so that is this kind of labels. These are already filled by by hand. We put the active cell dot value. The next one active cell dot value two. The formula of the active cell. The formula R one C one property. The text property. And then the active cell address that is with absolute cell addresses. Unless you specify two arguments, false, false. Then this one has true, true, but you don't have to say that. It is default. Row absolute is default. And finally, for the third argument, we do Excel R1, C1 notation. Then we do that again, but this time false, false for relative cell references. And then finally the weird one, that is the one that is offsetted from active cell offset 1.1. That's the subroutine. How do we call this subroutine? We, we have to do that in this case from three different spots. First of all, we have to do it when this workbook opens. And when you create that routine, you make sure that you are in the object workbook and then you select from here the event you want to use, in this case open. 
I happen to say range F8 select, that is a good example to use. And then user form 2, unless you had renamed it, I call it user form 2, dot show space VB modeless. If you don't see anything after show, then it assumes that it's modal. That means you cannot do anything on the sheet itself unless you close the form. I want to just be able to click somewhere. Okay. Then I call from user form 2, user form 2, we created a sub fill and we call that one. Then we are going to do that also each time the user wants to call that simple form. And we do that in a module. Insert a module. It's usually called module 1. And there we do the same again. User form 2.show vb modelers and user form 2.fill. And then probably you want to do one more. Each time the user clicks on another cell, you want that form to update. It will not update because it was already updated when you opened the workbook. But now we have to also do that when the user clicks on something else. So we are going to sheet one and we talk to the worksheet object and we use the selection change event. That means each time the user clicks on another cell and we get this one. User form 2 show VB modulus, user form 2 fill. I added here on error resume next. Is it necessary? Not really. But in case it says there is already a user form, then we will just skip that one. So from now on, we should be able to run this from here. Each time I do Control Shift S, that is the shortcut I created for that thing, then it will give me in whatever cell I happen to be. Why not this cell? Because that was in the open workbook event. So each time I click on another one, it gives me the situation for the other one. If you don't like this screen to always start here, then it will always start in the middle. Then you have to do a little more code. You have to talk to the, the, the user form to dot the left is the active window dot with minus let's say uh, 